Greetings and salutations, Sam here with Common Time Productions, and today I wanted to go over some fun discoveries we saw recently. So I opened up the store down here on Mixcraft, and I noticed a bunch of waves! Waves plugins! Oh, this was so exciting for us. Waves has been part of our daily workflow now for about five years, so this was a really neat thing to see. And so I thought I would go over some of the ones I saw in here and share them with you. Today we're going to go over 10 Waves plugins that are inside Mixcraft 10. All right, so let's jump right into it. Now the first one on my list is the C4. Now a C4 is one that I grab a lot. Multi-band compression is a constant go-to for early beginners and seasoned professionals alike. They will get the job done fast because of how they work. They kind of monitor what's going on, kind of keep track of each other, and we've got a lot of different controls, allows me to dial things in. I'll usually start with the preset. So for my overheads, I knew that, you know, I wanted to control the low end and the low mids so that my overheads would blend with the drums and pop through to the mix and help bring out that energy. So I'm gonna turn this plugin off real quick and then play this little part and I'll turn it on and off so you can see the difference. Let me back up again and go through this. So there's a little bit of the C4 there in action, and I followed it with an REQ so that I could roll off some of the low end there just to, you know, double protect myself so that I allowed the first drum bus to do the job of the low end, and then I wanted to make sure that my overheads then would come through, and I didn't want to get any phase problems, so I was cleaning up the low end and using the C4 to bring out the mid-range and high transients of the drum set so I could use them for energy in the mix. Moving on to the next plugin on my list, the API. All right, all of the API stuff is absolutely wonderful, but the 2500 compressor, this is a really cool one. I love it on guitars. I like that I can just, you know, quickly turn it on and just start getting results. You know, that's what I like about this stuff. Waves plugins are wonderful. <laughs> So, you know, just a little preview of how nice that compressor works. It's just wonderful. All right, so on my primary drum bus, I gotta bring up one of my favorites. The SSL. Okay, the G channel, the E channel, the EV channel, any of the SSL channel strips, or even the native ones that come with uh, an SSL interface. When I'm using this on my drum bus, primary way that I'm going to use this
I turned it on and off there a few times to try to, you know, highlight what it was doing and how I use the SSL channel, stereo channel, on my master bus for my drums. I also use it in conjunction with an L2 Ultra Maximizer and an REQ just for some catching control on the tail end, just in case. Because again, I really like this, uh, you know, the REQ is very transparent. Back to the SSL strip here. I've gone in and I have gone down to about 48 and then I have pushed this. That got me that really beefy low end that I like quite a bit. Now I came over here to about 500 and I went to a larger bell curve and I pulled that back slightly. And so this carved out some of the area for the bass and guitar to really pull out and show their, their stuff. Then, you know, in the mid range, I've got the three. 0.25 and pushed that but I did that one on a sharper bell curve so it was a little more focused and then I like to bring out the hi-hat the cymbals right at about 7k and so I'll boost that area as well one of the other things I really like about the SSL channel is that you know with the filters we get a high end and a low end cut off so that we can you know it's kind of like having a safety protection on your bandwidth so nothing's going to go below 20 and nothing is going to be above 18. now with the drums I like to you know somewhere between between 12 and tw or 12 and 18 is you know we'll bring out all the little crispy bits you know really nicely so I, I try to control it there and roll off after that so I don't get any really really harsh high end out of that and then I can control it with the master fader and I can also check out input and output signal uh, so that it is hitting the board in the right way if I want a trashier sound I'll take the input in quite a bit now, this is a great way to monitor your channel boost it get get it to do what you want it to do and get that great SSL sound. What you really get in this is the sound of a real transformer. This sounds like copper winding around a magnet inside a big board. Like this is why this is such an amazing plugin is you get the SSL sound. All right, moving down the list here. Brower motion. All right, let's have some fun here. As you could see, Brower Motion is like a remote controlled panner with a bunch of crazy controls. This is just so much fun to play with. Either playing with the presets or going in here and just going crazy with the knobs. This is a real fun one to play with. If you really want to, you know, play around with some ear candy, just some, you know, stuff here and there that you want to, you know, be a little more uh, interesting, you know, to, to be bring a little bit more attention to the mix. And so, you know, here it is in full action.
Brower motion. Too much fun. All right, let's move on to the L2, the Ultra Maximizer. This is just a great way to have control on the tail end of whatever you're doing, whether it's, you know, drums, bass, guitar, whatever you need to control and get to uh, into the level and kind of glue it together in a way. It's like having a couple of um, compressors and expanders in one. It's really a, a wonderful thing with drums. I'll show it, show it here. It can give you a lot of power super quick. You know, it's like having a, um, a gate and a limiter and a compressor all in one. So, you know, you can bring it up, thrash it a little bit, but that also kind of glues it together. Just use it sparingly. And then the output ceiling here, you know, you can just bring it back so that, you know, you're not slamming in all the way into the red. So, you know, you can bring it back. And so, you know, it's just kind of getting into that one, that two area, you know, then, you know, you're in your dynamic range right where you need to be. Again, wonderful tools to have it your disposal to get you moving quickly. One knob. On my master bus, I usually have a hard time dialing in room sound. For me, one knob is an easy way to kind of give easy reverb. You know, I just wanted to show that one that, you know, this was in here. Playing the mix. Easy reverb to use. One knob, whatever. And like I was saying before, what an incredible thing. They're all here, all available. This was a new discovery recently for me. I think actually on this particular mix, a CLA bass. Oh my gosh, this was so easy to use and I was able to dial in my bass sound super fast. So here, let me turn this off real quick so you can hear the difference.
All right, so the GTR tool rack, GTR3, absolute wonderful guitar modeling amplifier system. It literally is every amp you could think of. We've got a bunch of impulse responses that come with it for the different cabinets. You literally have your choice of whatever type of cabinet setup you'd like to use. I like to pair them. A lot of times I'll do a 12. So unlink them real quick because I want to do something different here with these. I have one on axis and then a 57 off axis. This way my amps are going to have a slight different sound profile now. Just a quick little, you know, demonstration of the GTR3 full tool rack. This thing does everything. All right, what else can we play with here? Let's see, which is the next one on my list? Ah, uh, the IM Pusher. This is an underrated saturator, and it'll do all kinds of wonderful, fun stuff. All right, so without. Change what I don't know, but it begs the question for the heart shape. Could it be? Is it true? Between a knife and a heart shaped hole with love had been. Could it be? Is it true? Did I climb to the top just to stare at the cue? Can't change what I don't know. But it begs the question how'd I get so? Knife and a heart shaped hole with love. Could it be? Is it true? Did I climb to the top just to stare at the cue? Can't change what I don't know. But it begs the question, how'd I get so? I think that demonstrated it pretty well. It just, it brings in some really great saturation to vocals or anything you want to use it on. And so this brings me to number 10 on the list, Paz Analyzer. All right, this is my favorite and my best friend. So I'm going to clear it real quick and you'll, and you'll see why. So this allows me to learn and gather a lot of information very fast. Between a knife and a heart shape.
this shows you where we're at. So I saw a couple of times we had a couple of little pokies out in the 4,000 and somewhere between, you know, 150 and 2,000 here. So I might go in, at, you know, this lets me know that I, I need to figure out what is causing that so that I can then go in and adjust that because I want this as clean of a line as, per, as possible. But this is really close to that line I am looking to get. You know, this is right around, you know, showing me it's negative 20. So I'm close to my negative 14 for luffs, which I've been monitoring over here. I've got this set for negative 18. You know, I'm keeping an eye on where I want my low end to hit. And then, you know, it's kind of a tapering off off a nice slow curve to match the low end to the mid-range to the high end. Paz allows me to monitor this very carefully. I can also see, you know, anti-phase and other things going on here. So again, this a lot gives me a lot of information that I might have something going on with my guitars that could be fighting and I might be able to find that and clean that up and make my mix even better than it already is. Here is the final one in the list. As you can see, I use a lot of other Waves plugins as well. Uh, a lot of them you could see in the list there. These are other wonderful toys to play with and things to go check out. So many things available from Waves. There's also they've got a really cool, you know, try before you buy stuff. They've got the studio verse, absolutely crazy stuff. Creative access is part of our, our workflow. We have also used the online mastering. This has also been a very, very wonderful tool to use. Although, you know, when we have our choice, you know, we will go and, and, and pay for, for mastering for our artists. Waves is is a wonderful addition to Mixcraft. It really pushes Mixcraft over the top. As you can see, we got through this with uh, no crashing. I am running a ton of these VSTs. Not only are these on my buses, I've got a bunch of these loaded on all my other tracks as well. So, you know, this is, you know, one of those places where, you know, I run a lot of this stuff all at the same time to get a good sound. You know, it just goes to show you that, you know, to be competitive and creative, these days you need the tools of the trade waves plugins will definitely help put your mixes over the top and be professional thanks again and i hope you enjoyed these 10 plugins from waves for mixcraft 10 and i hope that you know some of these things will help your workflow as well